Over the years, I've had a lot of questions on Sterling engines, how to design them, uh, how they're built, and what they're used for. In this video, I am going to go over uh, the Sterling engines I have. I am not a Sterling engine engineer. In fact, I wish I could find something from them. Typically, when you find stuff on Sterling engines, it's like from NASA, and they have a highly specific type of Sterling engine they're using. Something that's way out of the reach of DIYers. Uh, you know, the construction would be just, yeah, outrageous. So, um, yeah, there's just not a lot of good stuff on them, and a lot of it's trial and error. And uh, I have put together some information that I hope will help people who are trying to build their own, design their own. And that's what this video is about. So what I've done is I've taken the Sterling engines I own. So like these two low temperature and these three high temperature. And I've done measurements on all the key components. And I've put them uh, one by one. And then I've got a table at the end to compare the key features. And I hope that this will answer a lot of questions people have asked me. And I also hope that it'll help anybody who's trying to build their own. Okay, let's uh, get on with it. So the first one is, let me start a, the video here. The first one is a low temperature and I call it the clear base. So this is it here. And this is a still picture of it over here. And the power piston, which is this piece up here, the diameter this way across is 16.06 millimeters. The stroke is 7.45, which is roughly the same as the displacer. I'll get there in a minute. The chamber height is 34.65 millimeters. So that's from here up to here. And the displacement is 1.51 cc. So that's this volume down here. You see opening and closing. The displacer is the heated chamber. And the diameter of this one is 96 millimeters across this way. The stroke is, uh, you can see the shaft in the back. And you can see this displacer moving up and down. That is eight millimeters, which again is roughly the same as this. The chamber height is 20 millimeters. The displacer is nine millimeters thick. And the displacement of the volume in the chamber is 57.91 cc's. So one of the things I thought would be interesting is the displacement uh, to the power volume ratio. So that is the volume of this compared to the volume of this. And in this one, it is 38.35. The stroke ratio, which is the, the up and down of the power and the up and down of the displacer is 1.07. Okay, next. So this is the second low temperature. It has a steel base, so I call it steel base. The power piston, the diameter up here, that hole is 9.8 millimeters. The stroke is 10 millimeters, so roughly the same as the uh, displacer. The chamber height is 28.6 millimeters. So that is this right here. And the displacement is 0.75 cc's. Now the displacer, which again is the heated section down here, the diameter is 89 millimeters across this way. The stroke is nine millimeters. However, this one is magnetically coupled, and so that may change. I cannot see what's going on in here. It's hidden because it's obviously not clear. The other one was glass, so it helped me. But I believe these are magnetically coupled. The power piston and the uh, displacer piston are, are on the same rod because there's only one. In the last one, we had two rods. You can see one here and one here. But this one has the one rod. And again, I think they are coupled by a magnet. So the chamber height on the displacer is 11 millimeters. So it's 11 millimeters thick this way. And the displacer internally is five millimeters, which we can't see. And the total displacement is about 56 cubic centimeters. The ratio here, the displacement to power is 74.23. And the stroke ratio on this one is 0.9. This is the first of the high temperature. It is the gray star power. Star power is the brand name. The power piston, which is over here on this one, 
is 7.99 millimeters in diameter. And the stroke this way is 10 millimeters. The chamber height, so it's actually the length because it's laying this way. The length this way is 15 millimeters and the displacement is 0.5 cc's, so not very much. The displacer, which is over here, this chamber, the diameter is 14 millimeters. The stroke back and forth is 11.5 millimeters. The chamber height, which again, I should have called length, but from here back to here is 45 millimeters and the displacement is 1.8 cc's. The displacement to power volume ratio is 3.5, so huge compared to the others. And the stroke ratio uh, is 1.15. Okay, the next, the high temperature, I call this in the silver two-cylinder and generator because there's a generator, we're not using it here in this, uh, just, uh, just something to call it that differentiates it from the others. The power piston, again, is over on this side. The diameter is 12.57 millimeters, so that's across this way. The stroke is 16 millimeters back and forth this way. The chamber height, uh, again, I should have called it length, it is 19 millimeters, the empty part in here, and the total distance from the very back to the very front is 32.75. That's not really very interesting other than perhaps if you're building one. And the displacement is about 2 cc's. The displacer, which is over here, the diameter across the here, across this glass tube, is 12.5 five eight millimeters the stroke back and forth is 14 millimeters a little bit different you notice the chamber height so again this this direction so i'm just measuring the empty part the part that opens and closes is 25 millimeters and the displacement is 1.74 cubic centimeters the displacement to power volume ratio is 0.874 and the stroke ratio is 1.143. So the last of the high temperature is what I call the one cylinder and generator. Uh, again, we're not using the generator, it's just something to differentiate it. So the power piston is this piece back in here. The diameter is 12.43 millimeters. The stroke is 14 millimeters. The chamber height, the empty part in here, so I should have called maybe chamber length, uh, is 19 millimeters. And the displacement is 1.7 cc's. So again, that's this section back in here. Now, I'm going to say that I have tried to compare this to the other types, the two, two type of chambers. But um, yeah, this is the most sketchy. And so I'm not going to bet a lot on this, but I thought I would present it just for those who are interested. Let's move on to the displacer part. So this would be the equivalent out here. The diameter is 12.43 millimeters. The, uh, the chamber out in here is 25 millimeters long. It's 0.66 so the total chamber uh, is the, is the uh, iron wool that's in here. So about two thirds of the chamber is filled with this iron wool. The stroke is 13 millimeters. So if you want to call that the air movement back and forth and the chamber height is 25 millimeters. So it's pretty much from this aluminum piece out to the tip and the displacement is 3.03 cc's. The displacement to power volume ratio, this again is really sketchy because I, I did my best to try to equivocate it, but I'm not quite sure. So take it for what it's worth. 1.79 and the stroke ratio is 0.93. So here is a summary of the things that I think are most interesting and that are these ratios. So if we look at the low temperatures, the first one, which is the clear base, is the, uh, the displacer to power volume ratio is 38.37 and the stroke ratios is 1.07. The second one down here, the, the displacement power volume ratio is about twice as much as this one, which is a bit surprising. And the stroke ratio, eh, it's roughly the same. 
the uh, last one, this one, now you say, why did I put this in the middle? Because the specifications are actually somewhere between these and these. So again, uh, silver uh, one cylinder and generator, the displacement power volume ratio is 1.79. Stroke ratio is 0.93. So again, you can see it's closer, sort of closer to these, at least with the stroke ratio. The high temperature gray star power, this one is the, the displacer power volume ratio is 3.5. So very much different than all the others. I mean, uh, at least uh, very different from the other higher temperature ones, much more in line with the low temperature. So I found that kind of interesting. But again, it's off by a factor of 10 from these, but it's also off by what is that? At least two times this and three, almost four times this one. So okay for what that's worth but yeah 3.5 and the stroke ratio 1.15 and the last one high temperature silver two cylinder this one the displacement power volume ratio is 0.876 and the stroke ratio 1.143 so yeah even these two are vastly different so as you can see uh these sterling engines i pondered over it for a very long time trying to figure out what they had in common. Uh, some things like these seem to be relatively similar, but then when you get to these, it's like, wow, they're just like so much different. I have tried to make my own. I tried to make one of these. It did not work at all. And I made something like this one and it worked. Uh, it would run for like 10, 20 seconds and then quit. So the design can be very touchy. But uh, again, if you're going to DIY one, if you're looking to build your own, I hope you find these uh, bits of information helpful and uh, yeah, useful, interesting in your attempts to build a Sterling engine. Okay, well, that was it for today.